Do you drink coffee every morning? Maybe two cups? Three? What if I told you that those coffee grounds you're throwing away, or worse, letting sit in your trash can, are one of the most powerful composting ingredients on the planet? I'm talking about transforming used coffee grounds into the richest, darkest compost you've ever seen. And not in weeks or months, but in just three days. I'm going to show you exactly how I turned a bucket of coffee grounds into black gold compost in 72 hours. No complicated systems, no expensive additives, just a simple method that works so fast, you'll wonder why you ever threw coffee grounds away. Here's what most people don't understand about coffee grounds. We've all heard they're great for gardens, right? Sprinkle them around your plants, toss them in your compost pile, maybe mix them into your soil. But then you try it, and things go wrong. Your compost pile gets slimy and starts to smell like a dumpster. Or you spread coffee grounds around your tomatoes and the soil gets compacted and crusty. Or you add them to your compost bin and six weeks later, they're still sitting there looking exactly the same. That's because coffee grounds are one of the most misunderstood materials in composting. Everyone thinks they know how to use them, but almost everyone is doing it wrong. The problem isn't the coffee grounds, it's how we're using them. Let me explain what's actually happening. Coffee grounds have a carbon to nitrogen ratio of about 20 to 1. Now, most people assume coffee grounds are acidic because, well, coffee is acidic, right? Wrong. Used coffee grounds are actually nearly neutral, around 6.5 to 6.8 pH. But here's the key. Coffee grounds are incredibly nitrogen rich. They contain about 1.5% nitrogen by weight, which makes them a green material in composting terms, not a brown material like most people think. When you add pure coffee grounds to your compost without balancing them properly, you're creating a nitrogen overload. Those microbes that break down organic matter need a balanced diet, about 30 parts carbon to one part nitrogen. Too much nitrogen and things get anaerobic, slimy, and smelly. But when you give those microbes the right ratio, when you prepare the coffee grounds correctly, and when you create the perfect environment. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to use coffee grounds as a nitrogen accelerator, a secret weapon that will supercharge your compost pile and create heat levels that break down organic matter in days, not months. We're going to combine three key elements that work together like rocket fuel for composting. First, we're going to use those nitrogen-rich coffee grounds as our heat generator. Second, we're going to balance them with the perfect carbon source, something that absorbs moisture and creates air pockets. And third, we're going to add a microbial activator that jumpstarts the decomposition process immediately. Let me show you exactly how this works. I started by collecting coffee grounds for about a week. I saved my own, and I stopped by three local coffee shops and asked if they had used grounds. Most coffee shops are thrilled to give them away. They're just going to throw them out anyway. I ended up with about 15 pounds of used coffee grounds. That's roughly two gallons by volume. You can see they're still moist, which is perfect. Now, here's the critical part that most people miss. Coffee grounds by themselves are too dense. They pack together, they exclude air, and they create anaerobic conditions. We need to fluff them up with a carbon source. I use shredded cardboard, about 30 pounds of it. You could also use dried leaves, wood chips, or shredded paper. The key is getting something that's light, fluffy, and carbon-rich to balance out those nitrogen-heavy coffee grounds. The ratio I'm using is about two parts carbon to one part nitrogen by volume. That translates to roughly four gallons of shredded cardboard to two gallons of coffee grounds. Now here comes the secret weapon, my microbial activator. I took about two gallons of finished compost from my existing pile. This stuff is loaded with billions of active microbes that are ready to start breaking down organic matter immediately. Here's how I built the pile. Layer 1, about 4 inches of shredded cardboard spread out in a 3 foot by 3 foot area. Layer 2, I sprinkled about 2 inches of coffee grounds over the cardboard. I used my hands to break up any clumps and distribute them evenly. Layer 3, a thin layer maybe half an inch of that finished compost. This is like adding a starter culture to yogurt. It's inoculating the pile with the microbes we need. Then I repeated these layers. Cardboard, coffee grounds, finished compost, cardboard, coffee grounds, finished compost. I kept going until I had a pile about three feet tall. The last critical step, moisture. Coffee grounds are already moist, but I added water as I built the pile. I wanted everything to feel like a wrung out sponge. Moist, but not dripping. Within 12 hours, something incredible started happening. 
I stuck my compost thermometer into the center of the pile, and it read 135 degrees Fahrenheit. By hour 24, it had climbed to 145 degrees. This is the sweet spot for hot composting, hot enough to break down materials rapidly and kill weed seeds, but not so hot that it kills the beneficial microbes. This heat is coming from microbial respiration. When billions of microbes are feeding on organic matter, they generate heat as a byproduct. It's like a tiny furnace powered by decomposition. Those coffee grounds are the fuel. They're providing the nitrogen that allows microbes to reproduce exponentially. And that shredded cardboard is providing the carbon structure that keeps air flowing through the pile, which those microbes need to survive. At these temperatures, the tough cellulose fibers in the cardboard start breaking down. The coffee grounds, which are already partially decomposed from the brewing process, break down even faster. So, on day one, hour 24, the pile had already shrunk by about six inches. When I turned it with a pitchfork, I could actually feel the heat radiating off it. The coffee grounds were already starting to blend with the cardboard, and the temperature held steady at 145 degrees. Then, by day two, hour 48, I turned the pile again, moving the outside material to the center and the center to the outside. This adds oxygen and, you know, really ensures everything gets exposed to those high temperatures. By then, the pile had shrunk to about half its original height. The coffee grounds were completely integrated. You honestly couldn't even tell where the coffee ended and the cardboard began. Everything was turning this beautiful dark brown color. Day 3, hour 72, this is where the magic happened. I turned the pile one final time and let it cool for a few hours. When I came back and grabbed a handful, I just couldn't believe the transformation. That coffee and cardboard mixture had become the most incredible, rich, dark compost. Look at this. This is pure black gold. It's dark chocolate brown, almost black. It's crumbly but holds together when I squeeze it. It smells like rich forest soil, earthy, clean, alive. Now, a few quick tips if you want to replicate this. Temperature is everything. If your pile isn't heating up, you probably need more coffee grounds. Add another layer of nitrogen. If it smells like ammonia or gets slimy, you have too much nitrogen. Add more shredded cardboard or dried leaves to balance it out. If it's too dry, add water when you turn it. Remember, moist like a wrung-out sponge, never soggy. Size matters. You need at least a 3 foot by 3 foot pile to generate and maintain heat. Smaller piles won't get hot enough. And turn it daily. That oxygen is critical for keeping the process aerobic and fast. So there you have it. Three days from coffee grounds to black gold compost. No complicated systems, no expensive equipment, just simple layering and daily turning. The next time you brew your morning coffee, don't throw those grounds away. Turn them into the richest compost your garden has ever seen. If you want more fast composting methods like this, be sure to give us a like and hit that subscribe button. And if you try this coffee ground method, leave a comment and let me know your results. Now get out there and start turning those coffee grounds into black gold.